Uh, welcome to this panel uh, on law enforcement's relations with the community. My name is Muqtadar Khan. I'm a professor at the University of Delaware. I teach in the Department of Political Science and International Relations. Uh, this is a very special panel. Uh, as for those of you who were not here with our breakfast discussion, uh, I want to summarize for you that this conference on social justice, social justice is a very, very big topic, so we are not covering all aspects of social justice. The working definition of social justice that we are using for this conference, and it might help you uh, to understand the context, is that in a democratic society, in a constitutional society, uh, social justice is the right of everybody regardless of race, regardless of religion, regardless of national origin, regardless of ethnicity, to have access to the same rights and same privileges that the government and its society and the state provides. So for example, if in the United States, the United States Constitution guarantees freedom of religion, then freedom of religion should be available to everybody, Muslims, Christians, Jews, and others. If the state of Delaware or the government of the United States provides security and safety to its citizens, then it must provide it across the board equally to everybody, whether you are black or white, regardless of your cultural and lifestyle, cultural preferences or lifestyle, regardless of what you believe in it religiously or what is your national origin. It doesn't matter where you came from as long as you are a citizen. In fact, the United States Constitution is so profound that you don't even have to be a citizen of the United States to be eligible to enjoy the privileges that the United States Constitution provides as long as you are within the borders of the United States. So that's an important thing to understand. But in this conference today, we are focusing broadly on three issues. And being an academic, I try to put it in an academic way, we are focusing on basically three Ps. One P is prejudice, which is racism, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism. So we want to mobilize people of Delaware. We want to increase awareness and consciousness of people against prejudice, against racism, against discrimination of the other, regardless of what the other's ethnicity or religion is. The second P that we want to focus on is on the issue of poverty. Uh, one of the biggest <coughs> challenges to American democracy and harmony is the growing inequality in our country. The disparity between what the top three or four percent own and what the bottom of the people. Three percent of Americans today own 55 percent of America. So three percent of Americans have more wealth than the rest of the 97 percent of us. This huge inequality of wealth creates inequality of power. And after Citizens United, the law that allows very rich people to throw in a lot of money into our political system, it has made a mockery of our democracy. A very famous poet in India once looked at the Taj Mahal, this beautiful building, and he said that the emperor has made a mockery of poor people's love. I love my wife just as much as the monarch, and just because I can't build a Taj Mahal doesn't mean so yes, we, we can also be equal citizens if we all were billionaires. So that is another problem that we have to face as to how poverty and income inequality in this country is undermining our democracy. And the third P that we want to talk about is police relations. The images across the country are very, very frightening, especially starting with what happened in Ferguson, and then what you saw in Baltimore, and then this whole story of Juan McDonald in Chicago, which is simply unfolded, and the chief of police lost his position very recently in Chicago. So there is this growing perception in our country that, that the law enforcement is institutionally biased. The term that we use is racism without racists. So while individuals are very helpful and nice, the system is so structured that there is either racial bias or ethnic bias. Fortunately, Delaware is, is to a great extent, free of these problems. But today we have with us a highly distinguished panel of people who represent law enforcement in this area. And they are going to talk to us. They will make their initial remarks. But this session is going to be driven more by your questions. They are here 
to answer. This is about community relations. So the law enforcement representatives are here to talk to you and answer your questions. So please uh, be open to asking questions. Uh, do not be afraid of being politically incorrect. Uh, do not be afraid. Uh, uh, the cavalry here is to protect you, not to charge you if you ask tough questions. Uh, so without much ado, I'm going to introduce our panel to you. Our, our keynote speech today is going to be given by County Executive Tom Gordon. Tom Gordon is a very close friend. Uh, both personally and of the community. He was also a former police chief, so he knows exactly what is happening from both perspectives, from the perspective of the police operation and from the political perspectives of, of civilians overseeing the police operations. And because of his close interaction with the, with the Muslim community, he also understands the community's concerns. Uh, so so, so this, this delicate balance of protecting the citizens and the state while not undermining the rights, freedoms, and also the privileges of communities who are being watched. And I'm sorry to say that the American Muslim community is perhaps one of the most watched community in this country today. So from that perspective, uh, County Executive Tom Gordon is a very strong position to, to do this. Uh, his support for this convention is quite apparent um, on his own volition. He has made sure that there is enough protection for us outside. So you can see police relations already in action out there before we even begin this panel today. So he will be our keynote speaker. After that, we have Colonel Setting, who is the Chief of Police of Newcastle County. Uh, we have had, in the recent past, a lot of interaction with him on different cases from uh, concerns about security for religious places. Uh, the, the county police has taken initiatives to safeguard our religious uh, sacred places. We also have another event on December 10th where the police uh, and, and, and the law enforcement are going to share with us the measures that they are taking uh, to ensure that all religious places in, in the state of Delaware and in our county are protected and are safe. Uh, and then finally, we have Harpreet Singh Mokha, who is director for the North Atlantic region, which means Philadelphia, Delaware, New Jersey, this area. He is the director representing the Department of Justice in community relations. And one of the big issues, for example, uh, I, I engage in a lot of discussions about Muslim radicalization. In, since 9-11, since 2001, until now, American Muslims have killed 50 people in this country, period. And if you add what has happened in California as also terrorist activity, it's just 64. But the amount of discussion we have in the media about demonization give you a, a contrast. In the same period of time, mass shootings in this country have accounted for 280,000 dead people. 280,000 dead people in the last 14 years in mass shootings. But there is no profiling of any community, no racial profiling, no ethnic profiling. But Muslim radicalism, which has accounted for anywhere between 50 to 64, and the number of arrests, for example, there have been lots of complaints in the American Muslim community that there is an entrapment policy in the FBI. Uh, but our experience in Delaware with the, with the FBI and Terrorism Task Force uh, has been incredible. Jeff Rising, who is the current head of the Terrorism Task Force, he couldn't be here today, but he's speaking in my class on Tuesday. If some of you are interested in asking the FBI directly about their nature of operations, you're welcome to my class on Tuesday at 3.30 at the University of Delaware where you can talk to them. Tim Kiesweiter, who is now also part of the Newcastle Police and is on it, is going to be attending the panels today and tomorrow. He's probably here in the audience if I have not seen him. So without much ado, these are the issues that we are looking for, police relations with our community. Do we have trust in our law enforcement people? The trust is very important. For example, when I was listening to the people at the mosque in San Bernardino talk about this, everyone said he is devout and pious, and I kept thinking, what is the biz this thing? Every time you go to a mosque and ask the person who was involved in this shooting is from your mosque, and like, like the Boston shooting, and everyone seems to say they are pious. The community needs to have trust, respect, and confidence in the law enforcement. That's when they will reach out to the law enforcement. I should be able to call Colonel Setting in on the phone and say, Colonel, I don't want to make too much big deal about it, but I have a colleague who says sometimes things which make me feel very nervous. Can you check into it? 
That's an important part. This is what community policing is all about, where you build a relationship, because ultimately both of us, the communities and the law enforcement, have the same goal, to keep our societies safe. And as long as our societies are safe, our religious places are safe. So that is the background under which we're going to have this panel. So without much ado, the first speaker, County Executive Tom Gordon. Thank you.